Hey everyone, I thought it about time for another details video, this one dedicated to that most divisive argued about game, Kingdom Hearts 3. Despite my personal issues with the game, there's actually a lot of detail to be uncovered so today I've chosen 10 of these to talk about. I expect most of these are already known by people, it's not a cage one situation where a lot went under the radar, but still a cool detail is a cool detail, it doesn't matter much to me how well known it is. Starting out in space, I want to give a little shout out to the treasure spheres. These are fun ways for you to get a bunch of loot, including keyblade upgrade materials. They're very simple to complete, but the cool detail here is how similar they look to the map ball thing from Treasure Planet. I think this is very likely to be a reference. I mean, the film was likely a candidate to be a world in Dream Drop Distance, but it was scrapped. I hope the movie does end up in Kingdom Hearts one of these days. It'd be really cool to explore Treasure Planet. But for now, we have to make do with this nice little reference in Cage 3. This might seem obvious, but when you're defeated by Heartless in Kingdom Hearts, the game over screen with Sora floating there will show his heart hovering just above him, as of course the Heartless take hearts. Well, one cool touch that makes sense, but I'm glad they paid attention to, is that if you're defeated by Ansem, you'll get this screen. Of course he's a Heartless and the rest of the organisation isn't, so this only happens with him. Isn't that cool? I think it's pretty cool, and just to append this point, the fake out death screen at the end of the game with Xehanort is also a nice touch. And even better if you're on PS4 and you hear Donald and Goofy shouting Sora's name through the controller speaker. Really appreciate these little details. Let's look at Cage 3's form changes. Like Cage 2's dry forms, they change the look of Sora's outfit, although this time they're attached to the Keyblade transformation system. Power form has a red theme and the fleur de lis just as valor form did, that's a nice touch as they both represent strength. It also has a crown on the hood and a camo style on the legs, I really like the look of this form. Magic form is blue and covered in stars as you might expect. Guardian form has this diamond pattern and surprisingly nothing on the hood. The green form, which I think people have christened speed form, it has more camouflage-esque designs but this time on the arms and these flames on the legs. I quite like this form, it's nice to have a green theme for Sora. Ultimate form, like final form from Cage 2, has a white theme. The patterns on the legs remind me of Xemnas' zebra outfit, I gotta say. And there's the classic Kingdom Hearts crown symbol on the sleeves. Rage form is just cool all around, and finally light and dark forms for Oathkeeper and Oblivion. I like that they have the kanji for light and darkness, which are also the Keyblade's teeth of course. Dark form is especially cool because I just love dark stuff in Kingdom Hearts, and then you have double form being a mix of both, light and darkness on each side. A cool extra detail with this one is the heart insignia on the sleeves and on the hood. The one on the hood even being split in half between white and black, it's all great stuff. I know it's pretty obvious, but changing Sora's outfit can yield some cool details, and I hope there's more like this to come. Hell, maybe even bring customization back again like there was in 0.2. One easy to miss detail is in the Keyblade graveyard. In the corridors before the group fights, these pillars appear to try and block your path. They have interesting little designs notched into them. Most notably, two of the corridors appear to have weapons of the organisation members. See here in the corridor before the Zigbar and Riku fight. The pillars fly at you fast, but there are some etchings of Luxard's cards, Marluxia's scythe and Larxene's knives. Funny that these weren't on the path to their group fight, but eh, whatever. And before the Terranaut fight, there are more weapons, including Zigbar's Arrogans, Vexen's Shield, Sykes's Claymore, Demix's Sitar, and Vanitas's Void Gear Teeth. Even Lexus's Axe Sword and Zaldin's Lancers are here, despite the fact that they're not in the new organisation, not even as reserves. If you want to see these in more detail, I recommend watching Byroxus's breakdowns of the group fights, he shows them off very nicely. These are definitely a cool inclusion. Though the lore implications are something I don't want to think about, so I'll just think of it as a fun find that the developers snuck in there. Back inside the gummy ship now, and I want to mention a nice reference you can find in the Misty Stream area. Right by the Caribbean is the wreckage of many ships, and one piece that you can find is actually the bow of the Heartless ship from KH2's gummy mission, Phantom Storm. That mission was actually a route unlock for Olympus Coliseum rather than Port Royal, but it makes more sense for it to now end up here amongst all the other pirate wrecks. A small detail, but an appreciated one nonetheless. 
It was fun finding this myself in my first playthrough. The Data Battles in KH3's DLC Remind pits you against the real Organization 13's upgraded data forms. These fights have lots of new moves and they bring together memorable attacks from the past games. Dark Riku being a lot like Ansem Riku from KH1, Zemnus bringing back the Laser Dome, Marluxia's classic Pink Pools, it's all there. Plus other cool details like, for example, one of Luxord's attacks has his cards glow with magic that seems to represent Larxene's lightning and Marluxia's uh, flower power. It's got the right colours anyway. Shion, when she defeats you, says, You're going where I belong. Which I think is very edgy and dark. And when you defeat her, she says, This is how it's supposed to be. Which is also edgy and dark and depressing. Then, I don't know, the addition of number ranks to a new organisation? Not sure they make a whole lot of sense past Zigbar, but it's still cool to have actual numbers for them now. Oh, and this chandelier thing has seven lights on it, because of course it does. These fights also have plenty of detail for the mechanically minded too, but I'll leave that to those people to cover because I'm far from an expert in Cage 3's combat mechanics. Alright, so this is something I wish there was more of in this game, but still better appreciate what is there, huh? While you're making your way through Thebes, you can save some hapless residents from Heartless and they'll reward you for doing so. This is already a cool optional thing, but it's made better by the fact that if you come back here after the world's finished, the same NPCs will give you another reward. This little bit of extra interactivity can really perk up a world and stop it from feeling lifeless, and of course show that your actions can have an impact. Toy box is stuffed full of details, if I ever do a world exploration for it, I'm going to have my work cut out for me. What I want to mention here though is the mock-up video games you can find. This is a gaming channel after all. I love the attention to detail of these games, which vary in price and are, for the Play Plus, a console even more ugly than the ones we're actually getting. Wall Street Ninja, Tick Tick Party, Twinkle Puzzle, Yum Yum Cafe, Herd of Zombies, and a sports game called Perfect Smash. Bet Sora isn't in this one either. These range from $40 to $60, supposedly on sale, but Varen Rex seems to have jumped onto the next gen pricing bandwagon and is going for $69.98. My favourite one here has got to be Deep Dark Castle. I genuinely want to play this made up game. I bet it's a quote unquote Souls like. But yeah, loads of cool details here, so I thought I'd just give a spotlight to the games especially. The designers probably had a lot of fun coming up with these. Let's look at Lucky Emblems. But Nova, you say, they're everywhere. They're just a collection mechanic. That's not cool. And I agree, most of them are pretty uninspired. It's just a marking on a wall or a floor. But some are genuinely well hidden or just well integrated into the world. These ones that feel more natural or require the right perspective, I'm quite fond of them. The extra care put into them makes them more fun to find and more fun to recapture on subsequent playthroughs in my humble opinion. I would have taken a way lower Lucky Emblem count than 90 if it meant all of them were designed like this. I've chosen an apt subject for the final entry in this list. The final world is one of my favourite parts of Cage 3, certainly my favourite part of the endgame. The stars you can interact with here, bar the two voiced ones, are unknown, probably unimportant people who have died and are here in the Kingdom Hearts version of Limbo. They all have stories to tell, and some of them are pretty dark, like this child looking for their father, or the one that seems to imply a woman dying and thinking of her baby, like seriously it's kind of disturbing at times and I love it. These little details add so much weight to both the area and the game, and world building too, they're not special people, not characters we know, just ordinary people with lives who are now clinging on to something they hold dear, here on the edge of death. It's powerful stuff really. Also, there's one that mentions artworks, and I can't help but think of Paintings are Great from Cage 1. There's one line I especially love, special occasions may stand out, but there's nothing so precious as the quiet times between them. That's what life is, really. I know, it's a bit like the kind of thing you'd see on some inspirational Instagram post, or on the wall of some carefree vegan 20-something year old's bedroom, but I still like it. Without these stars, I think the final world would have far less impact and it goes to show how important details like these can actually be. So another Kingdom Hearts games details covered. Well, some of them anyway, as usual there's plenty here, so comment your favourite ones below. 
A couple of honourable mentions I thought of including were things like Ansem the Heartless walking towards Ansem the Wise and being literally in his shadow, and in Remind when Leon mentions a clue inside a dream being familiar to him. I suppose now that all the numbered games are done, we'll be moving on to games like Birth by Sleep. I'm not as well versed in the details of those games, so I'd need to do a lot more research. That means those videos might take a while to make, but hopefully I'll find some cool stuff, and until then, thanks for watching.